Hello, my name is Leanne Ford, and I'm going to give you a quick overview on collecting samples for ovine abortion investigations in practice. I am a veterinary investigation officer at APHA Thirsk. Before becoming a VIO, I was a farm animal vet in private practice in North Yorkshire for nine years. Let me set the scene. It's Sunday afternoon in early spring, and you receive a call from a farmer to say they've had five ewes abort over the weekend, and he wants you to investigate. APHA centres aren't open on a Sunday, so it is down to you to take the samples to determine the cause. As you can see from the VIDA diagnosis chart on the slide, the most common causes are, are infectious diseases, we want to empower you to feel comfortable at sampling on farm effectively so you can maximise the opportunity to gain a diagnosis for a sheep flock. Sending samples to APHA not only gives your client an answer to their problem, but it also contributes to national disease surveillance. It allows us to identify trends as well as new and emerging disease threats that can have an impact on animal and public health, as well as national food supply and safety. This data also plays a crucial role in international trade by proving national freedom from diseases such as Brucella ovis. This slide gives you an insight into why a diagnosis was not reached on postal submissions to our centres between 2018 and 2021. In the majority of cases, there was no apparent reason. This scenario may always happen, but please make sure you have filled in as much information as possible on the submission form so we can support you better. The next most common reason was incomplete sample range submitted. Please remember that each diagnostic test is only validated on certain samples, so it is crucial to submit the full sample set. For example, we cannot test for border disease on placenta. We need spleen. Next, we have poor sample quality or volume. We will discuss in the next slide which fetuses should be avoided. Other reasons include complete diagnostic package not requested. This speaks for itself. If you do not test for a disease, you will not find it. We can only test for what you ask for. Occasionally, post-mortem samples would be more appropriate. This is particularly the case if there is suspected concurrent illness in the ewes. The next question is, when should you advise an investigation? The general rule of thumb is that an investigation should be conducted when either two or more percent of the flock or group have aborted, or when there have been more than two abortions within two to three days, regardless of flock size. Please try to avoid sampling scavenged, severely autolyzed or mummified fetuses, as these can be heavily contaminated. When submitting samples to APHA, it is much more cost effective to, le to select the sample packages, TC0011 for one dam or TC0012 for multiple dams. Rather than the individual test codes, packages also avoid the risk of missing a common cause of abortion. You can see from the table that all the common causes of sheep abortion are screened for in our packages. The same fees are applied to fetal carcasses sent to our centres, but there is an additional disposal fee. There are two ways to submit samples for ovine abortion investigations. You can use our online submission service called ADTS, allowing live results and sample tracking. Simply search for ADTS submission online to set your practice up on this system. There is a separate webinar on this service within this series. The second option is to download a submission form and post samples the traditional way. However, with this method, you will not be able to track your samples progress. Regardless of which sample method you use, all samples must be sent to our Penrith Centre. The address can be seen in the bottom right hand corner of this slide. Now, let's get on to obtaining samples. On the slide is a list of suggested equipment you will need. It might not be practical to carry searing equipment onto a farm. However, it can be useful if there is a Bunsen burner at the practice for aseptic collection of, bi of bacteriology samples. 
Listed are the samples that should be taken. For the most part, placenta, fetal stomach contents, fetal fluid and spleen will be adequate to gain a diagnosis. Next are some top tips on obtaining these samples correctly. Placenta. The placenta is one of the most crucial samples. It is the sample we use to perform an MZN smear for screening for endotic abortion, Q fever and brucella. We also use the placenta to run our PCR for toxoplasmosis. If the NZN smear is inconclusive, we can also run PCR on the placenta to check for endotic abortion and Q fever. Make sure you include cotyledons and intercotyledonary tissue in your sample. Remove all contaminants such as straw and dirt and transport in a plain universal container. If there is no placenta available, Fetal stomach contents can be used for endootic abortion, Q fever, and brucella screening. Fetal stomach contents. When you enter the abdominal cavity of the fetus, this should be the first sample that you take. This is because it is absolutely vital that this sample is taken as aseptically as possible. It is used for bacteriology, so any contaminants will influence your culture results. The easiest way to ensure sterility is to use a vacutainer and needle. However, if the content is too viscous, you can incise the stomach wall with a sterile scalpel and then pipette or syringe the content into a sterile container. It is important not to re repeatedly pipette from a sterility point of view. Only a little content is required. Some fetuses will not have any fetal stomach contents. So in this scenario, a charcoal swab can be taken for the from the liver or lung for bacteriology. So how to do this? Remove the viscera and place on a clean surface. Heat your palette knife with a flame and then press the palette knife gently and swiftly onto the surface of the viscera. Incise the seared zone with a sterile scalpel and open the incision with a flame sterilized set of rat tooth forceps. Rub the swab along the parenchyma within the incised area. It is a charcoal swab that you require for this. It may be worth carrying a simple baking tray in your car that can be disinfected so that you will always have a clean surface available to work on. Fetal fluid. This sample is used for toxoplasmosis FAT if there is no placenta available. Fetal fluid is the free fluid in the pleural and abdominal cavities and can be sampled into a universal container using a pipette. Mummified fetuses often do not have any fetal fluid. Other samples that are required for our routine panel of tests are fresh spleen for border disease PCR, and fresh brain for Schmallenberg PCR if you observe arthrogryposis. It is important that you try and remove the cap of the skull to, ex to allow examination of the brain and check for ab abnormalities such as hydroencephaly, which often presents as a flaccid brain. Blue tongue must be considered if you observe this change of the brain. Remember that blue tongue is notifiable. So if you do suspect this disease, APHA must be notified via the 03200301 single point of contact number. However, sometimes the brain can be almost liquefied as a result of autolysis, but it is still worth collecting your fresh sample. If at this stage no diagnosis is reached, please contact your local VI center to discuss further sampling. If you have any further questions, please do not hesitate to call your local VI centre. The link to your local allocated centre can be found on this slide. The vets at the centres are there to support you. You can also take pictures of your necropsy exams and send them to the vets at your centre to help you further. We also have a necropsy sampling guide online to help you decide which samples to take from any on-farm post-mortems. Please see the link. Thank you for listening.